Case 14 is a 67-year-old woman with nasal stuffiness and anosmia, or inability to smell. You have coronal and sagittal images from a CT. And we have an MR through the same region. This is a T2 fat sat MR. Here you have pre and post contrast through the same region. And now coronal pre and post contrast. So my question for you is what is the most likely diagnosis? And where does this mass arise? So many of you may recognize this mass as an esthesioneuroblastoma. This is a neuroectodermal tumor arriving from the, uh, arising from the olfactory mucosa. Uh, for that reason, it has its other name, which is olfactory neuroblastoma. Uh, these patients, you can get bony remodeling and expansion of the nasal cavity. Uh, you'll often have destruction of the cribriform plates or dehiscence of the cap roof above the ethmoids. On MR, you tend to have uh, hypo to intermediate on pre-contrast intermediate T2, and then the area should avidly enhance on post-contrast imaging. You'll often see a waste or narrowing at the cribriform plate in cystic areas, and so the classic description is cystic areas extending into the anterior cranial fossa. The treatment for this mass is resection and radiotherapy. Here you see the CT images of the mass, so there's expansion of the right side of nasal passages and loss of definition of those turbinates on that side. You'll also see there's some dehiscence of the cribriform plate, so you've lost the normal bony definition of the anterior cribriform plate here, like there should be more bone in that region. Uh, here you see the same thing on MR, so you again have the cribriform plate, you have mass involving the nasal passages here on the right, and then you have intracranial extension here. You also have a little bit of edema in the adjacent portions of the anterior frontal lobe, which is very common with these masses. Uh, this mass, as we mentioned, arises from the olfactory mucosa, giving it the name olfactory uh, neuroblastoma. Differential diagnosis for these masses, you can't uh, always just call them esthesioneuroblastomas, although that's a classic description. You really have to think about primary sinonasal tumors, particularly squamous cell carcinomas, which are probably vastly more uh, common than esthesioneuroblastomas. Lymphoma, melanoma metastases can have a similar appearance. This is an example of a sinonasal squamous cell carcinoma. So you see the appearance is quite similar. Uh, you have a mass. Now this certainly looks more aggressive. So it's involving both sides with the nasal passages going into the medial aspect of the left orbit here. You have a very aggressive looking mass. It's involving the kind of premaxillary space going into the orbit, but you have a very extensive intracranial component. And you can see why this can be confusing because this has this intracranial component with intracranial sort of cystic or necrotic portions. But again, you have to uh, not be confused by that. Uh, if you see one of these in practice, you should definitely want to uh, rule out uh, cyanonasal squamous cell before just definitively calling it an esthesioneuroblastoma. Now, luckily, these are quite easy to sample, so there's very accessible tissue uh, available in the nose.